Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. For those of y'all that are new, welcome to MDLR Fishing. Today we're keeping it close to home. We have some adverse weather conditions, high winds out of the northeast, and uh, we're gonna hit a northern shoreline on Galveston Island. Hopefully it's gonna provide us with enough protection to be able to catch one or two keepers. On the highest speed setting and I'm going 3.9 miles an hour against the wind one of y'all asked a question on my last video that's how fast we're going with the prop now being changed out and it's brand new again uh, we should be able to see fish because this body of water is relatively deep in comparison to the remainder of our bay system so that's gonna allow me to use the finder to actually see those guys so I've got traditional view instead of side scan once we start going against the docks we'll use sight a combination of both side scan and traditional sonar with down scan uh, to see if we can find these fellas while we're waiting to get to our spot i wanted to let y'all know that today's video is sponsored by catch co these two lures that we're using are branded by those guys you can check them out by going to my video description down below there's going to be some links that'll take you to the shop carl's website and you can do some reading on these fellas right here if you become a member of the carl's uh, website or the carl's club then you can take advantage of up to 30 percent savings on a lot of your fishing tackle it's just not tackle they've got fishing gear rods everything dealing with fishing those guys have got you covered thank you catch co for sponsoring today's video go down into the video description you can read a lot more about the benefits of becoming a member now let's get back to fishing it's not looking good i'm not picking up any fish alongside the docks or down there on their pylons i haven't seen not one so far and we've been by several of them let's see if this one's got anything you can see on side scan nothing traditional sonar absolutely nothing there goes the pylons on side scan and they have nothing on them i'm looking for a target depth of around 10 feet right up against the docks so that those fish have somewhere to go for warmth and then they can just come right up like you can see that pylon easily there we are got him got him and that is a flounder nice be very close to being a keeper okay All right, we're gonna have to take this off to get an accurate measurement oh man look at that 15 on the money and that just means he's gonna shrink. When we throw him on that stringer, he gets stressed out. For some reason, they always shrink. Even though he's 15, I am not taking a chance with that. There we go. Get that out. Let this fella live to fight another day. One of the main reasons why I fish these pylons during uh, any time of the season is this right here. You've got all these barnacles. Sometimes oyster is growing up and around every one of these fellas. You can just see that they're all covered with it. That provides structure and it also provides an area for crabs and shrimp to hang around. And so the big game fish will collect around these areas come up pick off especially sheep's head and black drum will come up and just feed like munching on all of those barnacles and the oyster that grows around them so it's definitely a great spot to come and try to catch some of these guys use some 
like shellfish, shrimp, some fiddler crabs if that's what you got in your area, maybe some blue crab and like little chunks and stuff like that, you'll definitely increase your chances of catching something. We're not really getting the bite that I was hoping to right here alongside these pylons. And this is the last stretch that I'm gonna fish. We're gonna go out into the open water, fish the oyster reef. That's right in the middle of this area. And I'm hoping that we can find somebody there. Well, that didn't go according to plan and just because that wind is just cutting through my clothing, I've got to get back over here. Went over the reef, didn't see anything. Started way over there. There's a marker that you just can't see, but I mean, I've traveled a good, that's about 700 yards maybe. And I didn't see anything. Also traveled over there by the grass line on the opposite side and uh, nothing over there as well just have not been able to see the fish I could not find any marks uh, I've seen bait and then I've seen some other things that kind of look like fish but I dropped down and had no luck there goes something down there too but that's all I've been seeing all day long nothing that's the iconic fish mark oh my gosh I can't wait to make it over here and take some protection from those high winds. We made it and I'm seeing fish marks down there. We had several of them come by, like directly below the boat. Yes! Oh yeah, that's trout that's down there and we got a keeper. First one of the day. I knew what I saw, and thank goodness we have the hummingbird. Man, I got tangled up. Oh my gosh, I am grateful for this fella. Going on the stringer. That right there is a gorgeous fish, y'all. He kind of got the camera wet. Right on top of the mouth, too. There's a few more marks down there, so that's going to be to our advantage. Dude. Thank goodness we're keeping him because I think I impelled his brain. That's one. Hit it on the fall. That's a really, hey man, splash water in my eye, buddy. It's a good hook set. There we go. <laughs> yes. Hmm. Go back down there, get a little bit bigger. This has turned out to be a great day. I honestly did not expect much of anything given our conditions, and I am chill to the bone, but super happy that we've been able to make it happen. Man, the sun feels so good, y'all. Oh, gosh. Got him. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's why it felt so darn heavy. Look at these fish marks. Got them in the booty hole. Oh, wow. I was just kidding, but we really did. Hold on, bud. Oh my gosh, go take care of that. Lots of big fish down there. Holy, what the just happened? That was a clean cut. I have no earthly idea what type of fish would do that. Maybe a shark? 
Wow. All right, well, let's see what else we got inside the box to jig with. Okay, we got one more of these. All right, let's see if we can get whatever that was to bite again. We got them. We got them. Look at that. They are getting foul hooked. They're coming over, checking it out. Ah, buddy, I am so sorry. My gosh. I don't think he's going to make it. I'm very sorry. Go nurse that. It's another speckled trout. It's two of them back to back. And then we had that one bite that just completely clean cut through my fishing line my leader line and that's 30 pound test too that is a good one right there y'all that is a keeper about a 17 17 18 somewhere around there that is another gorgeous fish. Right there. 18 inches. 17 or 18, somewhere around there. And they have been very finicky with that bite. I'm watching them all over the hummingbird. And 10 to 12 feet, that's exactly where they're biting at. And uh, they're just chilling right up against the calm side of the shoreline I mean gosh it's just so loaded with fish and bouncing it off the bottom that's all I've been doing got lucky on that one right there I think that's gonna be my last cast right there y'all six hours of fishing three keepers and sunlight is going away. We're gonna take this guy home right here and cook it up. Oh, fooled ya, fool. Catching one last one before we make it to the ramp. Oh, and it's a red. Nice, buddy. That's all we needed was a redfish, a keeper red, and we'd had official slam. Here's what we've got going on. We just came back from the grocery store for a few ingredients, bell pepper, We've also got some cilantro right here, the fresh stuff. Fresh green onion right here. So we got that. We've also got some panko, uh, chipotle, fresh Mexican style cream, and a poblano pepper. The star of the show is this fella right here, Mr. 18 inch speckled trout. And uh, let's turn to and start getting everything prepped and ready to go. start by adding one tablespoon of butter. We've got approximately 
one tablespoon of olive oil in there as well to make sure that our butter doesn't burn. This right here is a complete mixture of poblano pepper, the diced or actually minced shallots. We've also got cilantro in there and then green onion. All of those are going to be for flavor. We just want to soften them up and get them going. Woo, smells really good. Oh yeah, and there's garlic in here as well. And because everything was minced, it cooks down fairly quick. So there we are right there. We're gonna add one more tablespoon of butter. Let's get that melted down. Here's half a cup of panko. Sea salt. Cut our heat and then just thoroughly mix it in. Make sure the panko absorbs all that butter. So that looks really good right there. Panko has done its job in absorbing everything. We'll take our warm breading mixture. That's a lot of breading and just a little bit of fish. So I'm not gonna use the full amount because I don't wanna overpower our fish. If I'd have known that you know one small fish was only gonna provide us with that much, I would have kept that second keeper, but hindsight's 2020. Next time we do something like this, we'll make sure to keep enough. I'm gonna thoroughly mix this in. The fish is raw too. It's gonna finish off in the oven. I don't wanna cook my fish and then throw it in the oven only to dry it out even more. I was just eyeballing everything and yeah, I think we're gonna use the re remainder of that stuffing. For the bell pepper, all I did was remove the cap and then the veins, got that out, took the seeds out as well. So we throw in those guys in a 400 degree oven with a timer of 20 minutes. There we are. Approximately one tablespoon of butter. Get our shallots in there, our garlic. Just keep stirring because it will burn really fast if you don't. Okay, there we go. I think we're ready to add the chipotle. Nice smoky flavor. There we go. Thoroughly mix this together. Thank you, sweetheart. Now we're gonna add all eight ounces. Stir this. Okay, put that on a simmer. We don't wanna overcook it too fast. And this right here is just blue agave, the syrup. I think it's syrup, right? Light syrup, yeah. We're gonna take a quarter of a teaspoon of this and add that. For those of you that don't know, agave is the main ingredient that is used to make tequila. And being that we're doing a Southwest style stuffed bell pepper, um, I think it'll be perfect. I'm not too sure if this is gonna go a long way with the agave or not, but Hopefully it does. And then that's it. We're just gonna continue stirring this. We'll salt it and wait for the uh, bell peppers to come out. There they are. Turn the timer off. Here we go. Bring that in here, sweetheart. So put some of that on top. <laughs> All right, really yeah, good. go ahead and give them a shot before I ruin it with the sauce. Okay. You got it? You got a close up of this right here too? Why do you think it's gonna ruin it? Mm. Well, I mean, Something. it just looks like a bird came and had an accident right on top of our pepper. It's gonna be hot, so be careful. You say be careful and you just put it in your mouth. I don't know how you do that. Is it good? I like it. Oh my gosh, I like, like it a lot. Like how hot is hot? It's not that hot. I can't handle it. It's got a lot of spice, like the kick, the chipotle, the poblano, the chipotle, but mainly the chipotle. That's good. It's really good. Mm-hmm. I like to eat the pepper though, and you don't. I don't. You don't like to. But... You can eat that afterwards, I guess. Mm-hmm. Oh, I got some. It's that tastes really good. The sauce. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. I like it. So if you eat from the top, you can just spoon some back in. We got a fresh pot of beans yesterday that the wife made and some homemade Mexican rice. So it's gonna go with the meal just fine. Mm. It's not super spicy. Mm -hmm. It's good though. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need more of that. Go ahead. But I need a spoon for it. Use your regular spoon. Nobody's gonna eat it but us. I just want people watching the video to be oh, like, the, the last person <laughs> that said double dipping. Yeah, she's gross because she just you know, ate. Like, if we in. invite you over to our house, we're not going to do that. Like, put the spoon in our mouth and then put it inside the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I had a good idea to do this. Mm -hmm. Really good. The speckled trout is nice and moist. Mm -hmm. Very tender. The sauce does give it more flavor, like... Yeah, like a... I think it's where the kick comes from, like the spicy kick. It's really good. I even honestly think someone who doesn't like fish... Would love Could this. love this, because you can't You can't taste, taste it. You feel the texture of it, but the best way to describe it, I think, is... It's just fish. It's, you, you can't put your finger on it. It's mm -hmm. like, what's that flavor? But That's... even the texture kind of matches the texture of the um, panko. Yeah. Almost. So it's like, you can't really tell. That's really good. So it's hard to describe like what non-seafood, I'm not going to say lovers, maybe lovers, but non-seafood eating people, mm -hmm. when they eat it, it's like, well, what does it taste like? Well, it's fish. It's just fresh fish. Just... Well, I think part of the the issue because i've always said i don't like fish but i think the problem was i had never had fresh fish like truly fresh fish like I, fish yeah. that i had tried was probably bought from like a fish market you're, or, well no i okay a so, restaurant so yeah like. but your expectation is that of the way you just said a restaurant and maybe captain uh, i was gonna say captain john's a uh, captain <laughs> d's um long john silver like those places, well, a I mean, McDonald's, I McDonald's fish au filet. I had those when I was a kid. Do those places even exist anymore? Um, I haven't seen I know one of them do. Captain D's and Lord knows how long. I think Long John Silver still does. I think so. But yeah, your expectation, it would be blown if you didn't know what to expect and then you ate this right here. I, that's yeah, like level 100. Yeah, for sure. All right, so before I end this one or before I take another bite, I wanna end this one. We have just hit 47,000 subscribers. Thank you to every one of you out there. Uh, for those of you that chose to become a subscriber, we really appreciate it. We're well on our way to 50,000. That's such a major milestone. So I wanted to do something for like by way of a giveaway. Uh, I think that that's going to be like two of my fishing rods. I'm going to be willing to part ways with them that I've personally used. Not that it makes it better or anything like that. That's just basically what I can afford to do. Uh, give two rods away and all you have to do is just keep watching. Subscribe. Once we hit 50,000 subscribers, we will do that giveaway. I will remind you all about it, but that's my effort to make a strong push towards 50,000. It takes a long time to just generate 1,000 subscribers. So hopefully this is gonna be an incentive for the 70% of y'all out there that watch and are not subscribed. Um, I'm hoping that you do because once we get to 50, we're halfway to 100,000 and that's whenever we will get our plaque, but we'll cross that marker whenever we get there. So. Thanks again for watching. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you enjoy my content and you want to help to support the work that I do, you can do so by clicking that subscribe button again. And then also hit the thumbs up button. And until next time, tight lines, y'all.